What's up YouTube? I'm back and today is day two of tutorial miss or whatever we're gonna call it. I have an absolute banger today. Shout out to Not Edwards for giving me the suggestion to do the flex up music video. Basically what I did is I watched the video its entirety and picked like I think the core effect or in my opinion the coolest effect. I'm gonna be breaking that down. I also like just go through the music video in general and kind of just tell you what they did. Like they use projectors, multiple different cameras, all types of stuff, but we'll get into that. So yeah, appreciate you guys giving me suggestions in the comments that means a lot to me and really helps me out because i got another 29 videos or something if you have any ideas comment them below also if you're just tuning in today what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be uploading 31 videos across the 31 days of december kind of like vlogmas or whatever youtubers do but we're going to be doing tutorials primarily and then maybe a few other videos so if you haven't watched yesterday's video, go check that out. And I'm bring up that stat again. So if you're tuning in today and you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe because the majority of people that watch me are not. I mean, there's no reason not to. I'm gonna be dropping 29 more tutorials this month. There is going to be a tutorial you are gonna like. All right, so hopping into Premiere here, we're just gonna be going over the video as a whole. I'm just gonna play it and skip three parts. Basically this premise of this video is they're doing a bunch of different jump cuts and like these photo effects, low shutter speed, using a bunch of different cameras. And then they have, th this is the main effect we're gonna be going over today. We're gonna be showing you how to get this like paper-like effect. Pretty simple, I have a pack included. It's gonna be free of charge. I'm gonna be making a paid pack eventually, probably sometime next week when I get my photo scanner in so we can get some really high quality photo assets and stuff. The one I'm gonna be using today is completely free of charge. It will be in the description. Same with all the brushes, people that worked on this project, everything will be found in the description below. So here's one of the projector scenes I was talking about. So what they have is they have a camera on them and then a projector playing. It's like an infinite loop because the camera's picking up what the person's seeing and then it's playing double and then, you know, it's kind of like when you look look into a mirror and like there's another mirror behind it and just you get what I'm saying. Um, this effect here is what they're doing is they're recording the footage and then they have like an old TV, like a CRT TV. I think that's what they're called. Then they record that footage, play it back, record it on that TV and then have a, they have a thing called a visual synthesizer. That took me a few tries. Basically is what it does is it I'm not exactly sure, but it tweaks the input so it kind of just like moves the colors around pretty cool you can i think you can find them on ebay you can find them a bunch of different places i know you can make them i don't have one i'm probably looking to get anyone because they're really cool and they're they've been using a lot of like mainstream music videos now they keep like those three effects a projector a bunch of different cameras and then the photo effect throughout the music video and that's what gives it its style and obviously a bunch of jump cuts using low shutter speed and then skipping to the end here the video is done by Zamak and Rahim. I think that's how you say their names. I'll have their stuff linked below. So basically what I did is I just went through here and I grabbed a bunch of screenshots. So you can just, if you don't have pictures or you want to use your own footage, put it into Premiere. And then I just chose this scene and then you can just pick random uh, frames and screenshot them with this uh, export frame button. And if you don't see that, just click here and find it and then add it to the bar. So I already went through and made a bunch of different screenshots. What we're gonna do is we're going to go into Photoshop first and then open a new project. We'll title this main paper because this is gonna be the big one and then there's gonna be the small ones. And then I made it 1920 by 1080 with 300 pixels per inch. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna drag in this paper grid that can be found in the description, 100% free. I just basically drew on some paper and uh, took a picture of it and brought it on my computer. So we'll put that in there and then we're gonna drag one of the screenshots in and it should fill the whole frame. And if it doesn't, just make sure it fits over that. And then what we're gonna do is right click on the picture and go to create clipping mask. What this is gonna do is it's just gonna go over the paper itself. So nothing else will be behind it. And then just play around with the blending modes. I found that like color burn and Maybe multiply look good. I think I'm gonna go for hard light here. Just kind of personal preference or whatever. Then I'm also gonna make a background layer and just make it so it's black so we can like see what's going on. What I'm doing here is it's really simple actually. What you do is you go to your eraser tool and then we're gonna select the mega pack. I'll have the link in the description, I think. Yeah, so it's gonna bring you to this link. And what I did is I just downloaded the mega pack. It's on Adobe. So I think if you have an Adobe account, it's 100% free. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I just downloaded it today, so it was free for me. So uh, I think if you just have an Adobe account, maybe you have to be a cloud member or whatever, but uh, it's pretty simple. If not, you can find some other brushes somewhere. I just, uh, what I'm gonna be using is the dry media brushes anyways, so you don't have to get the whole pack if you don't want. 
but it's nice to have all of them. So then we're going to go to erasers, and I like the Kyle's eraser natural edge. And then I clicked on the layer, and it made it a smart layer. What I'm going to do is just, you can just go around the edges here and kind of make it look like it's coming onto the, the paper, like it's like this part's been worn out and the picture's not there anymore. So you can just go through the picture. Honestly, like any mistake is kind of cool looking to me at least. So there we went through and just did that on the image layer itself. And then now we're gonna go and do that on the paper grid uh, layer. So it's gonna make it a uh, rasterize and make it a smart object. And then this is where you get the, looks like it's paper ripped. And you don't have to do it everywhere. You can just do like corners or places where you think it looks cool. I think where you like further go in into the image is a good spot to do it on uh, on the pictures here. And honestly, this brush is like so good that it just makes everything look pretty good. You don't have to spend much time. So I think that looks pretty cool. Um, I noticed in the video, they kind of like played with colors. So you can just go to image adjustments and you can just do uh, like channel mixer or something. And this is gonna affect the red, so you can take them out, make it like blue or something. We'll do, bring that up. I'm just playing with the colors, thinking what would look kind of cool and what, what the style of the video would look like. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And then that's what one of them look like. What I do is I just copy both the layers and then turn off a copy of them, merge them. So then hide those two. These are just for like, if you wanna go back, so you don't destruct what you just worked on. And then uh, filter. Adding some noise, I feel like, really uh, sells the effect. You can just play around with whatever you like, whatever you think looks better. So monochromatic makes it black and white, obviously. And then uh, if you uncheck that, it adds the color noise. I think the color noise looks pretty cool here. We're gonna do 15%, something like that. And then turn off that layer, and we can go ahead and, and we can save that as the main paper. And then we'll just do that one, because we have a bunch of different images coming. So to save time, I'm going to keep the same paper rip and I'm just going to erase more from it. What you can do is you can just restart every time. Or now that I'm doing the second frame, I realized you should probably, if you do the smart filters or whatever, and you do the channel mixer, just remember the numbers if you want it to be the same color every single time. So I'm just going to make them easy numbers to remember. So I will get back to you guys when I'm done with those five. So I'm just going to be doing the same exact thing, but just making it slightly different. And I also forgot to mention, if you're not saving it as a PNG, it won't have the transparent background, so you won't be able to overlay it over footage. So just make sure you're doing that when you are saving them. Yeah, now that I went through and made each one a little unique, here, this is what it goes through. It kind of like, paper almost kind of looks like it's going away. You can do it a different way. I just didn't feel like redoing it each time, so it just got smaller, if that makes sense. So uh, as you can see, like, I wasn't too careful around the edges and stuff you can clean that up and make it look a lot better i just did it real quick it probably like only took me 10 15 minutes you can get this effect done pretty quick so that's the main picture and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up first off we're gonna make sure we save this so if we want to do any changes on the images or whatever you can always go back and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new one and title this folding paper and for this one, we are going to use these three different pieces of paper here. I included uh, all of them in the description, like I said. And we're going to hide these two. And then we're going to take a different screenshot. We're just going to use the same picture for this one for all of them. Clipping mask, just like last time. Pretty much the same thing. And for this one, you can kind of make it two different options. You can make it where paper would actually be double-sided. So like it was printed on both sides so that you can like have the image overlaying here. Or for the first one, you can just have it completely just normal like this and then then start showing the uh the image here obviously the third one i think what i'm gonna do is i think i'm gonna do where it's completely white and then it like opens up to an actual image and if you wanted to have it where it was like double-sided or whatever what i'd recommend is just like when it's like this side i would like flip the image horizontally like so like so i would just go here with and then just put a negative so kind of just flip it so it looks like different than like it's just like being overlaid if that makes sense but i think i like how the uh image is so i'm gonna save this as fold one png and then we're turning off that layer and then turn this on and then we're going to create a clipping mask and then we're going to turn down the opacity a lot here what we're going to do here is we are going to use the what is this tool called the polygon tool i don't know i'm not a a name guy for the tools you can use pen tool quick selection tool whatever you want i just thought this was easy because it's a rectangle or whatever all right 
So then I'm just gonna delete, make sure it's, uh, if it says that, just rasterize your layer type and delete that. And then I can turn up the opacity again. So what it does is it it's behind that, if that makes sense. And then we're just gonna go to hard light like that. And like, you can already see that it looks like the image or whatever is right there. And then if you wanna make it more realistic and look like there's a shadow there, what you can do is you can control click where you just deleted. So it's gonna have this part just selected and we can go ahead and have that hovered and then click on the fold layer or the paper layer, the non-image layer, and then make a brush and maybe make the opacity like 10 or something. What you'll be able to do is make sure it's like a, let's go to general brushes and do a soft brush. And then what you can do is you can just paint in a shadow. So you can, what you can do to make it like super simple is just click here, go all the way down to the bottom, and shift click, and it will drag a line and then control D to deselect that. And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna add a little bit of a shadow. So it makes it seem a little bit more three dimensional. And then just like last time, you can go and use the eraser tool on the whatever image layer and then do one of these. So it looks like it's being ripped away. And then just like last time, go here, just go through the edges. Pretty simple effect when you have all the uh, the assets and stuff in front of you, but uh, coming up with this was actually kind of uh, kind of challenging. Thinking of a way to how you can do this, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add that back uh, background layer again, just so I can kind of see what I'm working with. That looks pretty good. So make sure to turn that off before you save. And I just number them so it's easier, like when you're in Premiere or whatever, where you can like lay them down in order. Go to the third fold, deselect that layer, and then I'm just gonna drag the image on again, and create a clipping mask, hard light. Go to the eraser tool and then just erase the edges like that. Also, another tip, if you guys wanna uh, make it a little bit more noticeable, like the uh, the folds and creases and stuff, it works better on like light areas, but you can uh, you can either turn the opacity all the way up and kind of have it where it, I'd recommend it smaller. Kind of have like a rip through the line. Kind of looks like it was worn there. Just drag. You can obviously be a little bit more uh, careful with what you're doing. But uh, I think just doing that makes it look a little bit more like a photo too. Obviously this doesn't look too good, but we're gonna roll with it. And then I forgot for the other two layers to actually add the green. So I'm gonna go back and do that and then we're gonna hop into Premiere. Now that we're in Premiere, what we can do is we can import all of the pictures. So I'm just gonna import all of these. And we're gonna make our own version of the effect. And if you wanna see them in order, I just do a name because then uh, it'll be in like numerical order if you name them all the same thing. So one thing I noticed before we get into uh, laying down the photos, what you wanna do is you just wanna find uh, how you want it to eventually look, see how it kind of unravels. Uh, we'll see. See, it's like starts zoomed in here and then zooms out. So find your, your final position and lay them out like that and then do the effect. And then what you do is you nest all of these together and then you can zoom out and move them around as like a unit. So like all these, what would this be? Five different things are all attached to each other. See how it, it starts here, it gets on the left hand side and then it moves all over at the same time. I mean, you can do it without nesting, but it would be a lot harder. So I'd recommend just finding the spot you want it to eventually be at and then work backwards from there. And I'll kind of show you what, what I mean by that. So we're gonna use our first photo. So what I mean by that is effects. And if you wanted to, you could we could have saved time by uh, figuring out where we wanted it in Photoshop first. But I think this will work. We'll have that right there. We'll put this image because we want it below, kind of like how they did in the video. We're gonna make this smaller, put it down here, and then you can just uh, and then you can just alt click and drag it up, and then move this one over a bit, and then same thing if we wanna copy the exact effect or something like that. very similar. There we are. So we'll put this, we'll actually end up using the last image instead of the first image. So I'm gonna replace number one with five here. And then, cause this is gonna be the last position in the effect. So we'll have that there. And then we're gonna drag this. So it, we have five of these. So we're gonna do one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And we'll have this right there. So that's gonna be the, the last frame of the effect. And then we're gonna go to our project, main paper. And then what you have to do is just copy and paste the position position and scale of the last frame onto the first frame of that one, if that makes sense. So that will be in the same exact position as the other one. And then we're gonna do the same thing, but with the fold. We're actually gonna put the fold here. We're not gonna copy the exact position. 
because we want it to like come out here and then like duplicate down there. So now we're gonna go to our second frame. Again, copy and paste the final position for this one. And we're gonna go to the second frame, but then we're gonna go here and actually, so this one like correlates with that one, if that makes sense, the folds are together. So what we're gonna do is go to effects controls and then copy and paste that into the next fold. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing exactly because it's, it's a little confusing to explain. I don't exactly know how to say it better, but hopefully the visual of me doing it helps out. So basically the reason we're copying it over is so it stays in the same spot. See how it opens there? It looks like it's in the same spot. We're gonna go to the third picture. Yeah, we're just copy and pasting it. So it looks like it's the exact same spot on the video, which it is. Copy and pasting all the numbers, boom, boom. And then go to the third fold and do the same thing. That's control C, control V on your keyboard if you didn't already know. And then we'll do paper four, same thing. A lot of this effect is just doing the same thing over and over again. It's a little tedious of an effect, but I think it looks really cool. And uh, I think that's the reason why it looks, it stands out so much when someone does it because it actually takes a lot of time and effort, which is always uh, a cool thing for a, an effect. And then we're just gonna, we're actually gonna make this one frame longer so I can delete this. So it goes out, comes in, unfolds, hops down there, and then becomes three frames. And then obviously the photo, the top photo doesn't change because I didn't have an extra one. And then what I was saying about the nest earlier is we're gonna go ahead and go nest, nest the sequence, and then go to effect controls. And we're gonna keyframe, and we're just gonna, you can click motion here, and then you'll be able to drag it around like just kind of how you want to. So there we go, we'll start off like that. Go ahead until it skips to the next one. And we're just gonna keyframe every frame. So that way it doesn't like slowly move, it like jumps like a like how the picture is doing. So then we'll go here, kind of make it look like that. And then one frame ahead, keyframe, but we're not changing anything. And then go here, and then I think we're just gonna reset it there. Now we're gonna go one one more frame before we do that. So we're gonna delete that and make it something like that. And then two frames, skip. There we are. One frame, keyframe, skip, and then you can this is where you can like move it over. Keyframe both of those. One frame ahead. And then something like that. And there's something really quick that just pops up. And that's why the effect's so cool when it actually is done. Cause it, you notice how much of time and effort we just put into this effect for it to only last, uh, what is that? eight frames or something like that. And obviously you can make, if you want, you don't have to do a uh, two frames per thing. You can do three, you can do four. I think to fit the style of the video, the two frames is pretty cool. I'm not exactly sure what they did. They might've done a little bit longer now looking back on it, but I think that effect looks crazy. Like that just, that looks like it's supposed to be in the video, honestly, right there. And if you want, you can add a drop shadow on here and it kind of just separates the background. And then obviously you can add any effect onto this or onto each image to make it different. Like I added the grain and the different colors. Yeah, that's pretty much it for the effect. Hopefully you guys understood and could follow along. I think I think I was pretty clear what I was doing when I was showing you guys, but it's a little harder to explain with words on how to do it. But if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Definitely give me suggestions for videos. I appreciate you guys making it all the way to the end. Like, comment, subscribe. That's pretty much it for the video. 